Hi, my name is Ajay Chari. I'm a professor of clinical medicine and the director of the myeloma program at UCSF, San Francisco, California. So when we think about the side effects of talquetamab, which is targeting GPRC5D, uh, what we know about this drug is that it is remarkably active. The response rate is 70% and the remissions or progression free survival can be as long as about a year. And what's also very unique about the efficacy of this drug is it's the only drug in myeloma where high-risk patients' remission lasted as long as standard risk. Now, of course, there's always side effects of any drug. And this drug's side effects we, we describe as on-target off-tumor, which means when you're trafficking a bispecific antibody where one side binds to the myeloma cell and the other side binds to the T cells, the target is GPRC5D, so that when the molecule goes to the T cell and attaches to anything that expresses GPRC, first and foremost, it's the myeloma which it kills. But we think there are other tissues in the body that also express this GPRC5D, which explains the side effects. And broadly speaking, the side effects are loss of taste, which we call dysgeusia, and that can lead to difficulty swallowing and weight loss. We see skin changes because GPRC is expressed on heavily keratinized tissues, meaning thick skin, particularly the palms and the soles. Also, we see some rashes. And the third is the nails, um, so because nails also have a lot of keratin. The nails is a cosmetic issue, and um, we've maybe nail strengthening solutions can help. With the skin, quite manageable. It's really in cycle one, and you can give topical steroid creams for rashes, and sometimes brief course of oral steroids if the rash is quite distributed. And also, same thing for the peeling, um, that if that happens, you can put topical steroid creams. I think the biggest concern has been how do we manage this dysgeusia, difficulty swallowing, and weight loss. Now, certainly, you can um, do salivary substitutes. Uh, it's important that if you lose saliva that you maintain good hydration because otherwise you can have dental issues. And so it's good to keep up with a dentist, do oral hydration and rinses, and try to keep up your weight. So beyond that, what else do we know? Well, first is I think we need more work, right, because dysgeusia the one we grade a side effect, we typically use this clinical toxicity criteria, or NCICTCAE, which goes from one to four. And the problem is that dyscusia is a side effect that we don't have a lot of information about, but we only have low grades. So we can't even characterize it well because we only have grade one and two. So the first thing is we need to do a better job because taste is mediated by salty, sweet, sour, uh, bitter. And so we need to understand which tastes are really being affected and how long. But as we work on that and as we do also a randomized study with different potential uh, solutions that have been tried, how do we manage that in the interim? And so the first thing I'll say is we think these side effects are actually relating to response. So studies have shown that if you get these taste, skin, rash, nail, uh, palmer planter peeling, so hand and foot peeling, there's actually about a 20% higher chance that the patient is responding in the first few months, meaning this may actually be what we call a biomarker. We don't have a lot of examples of this in myeloma, but in other diseases, when patients, for example, have a rash, it usually means that the patient is responding. Here, I wouldn't say it's that one-to-one, -one because the good news is 70% of patients respond, which means a vast majority of patients respond, but also about 70% of patients will have loss of taste. So it's not a one-to-one, -one, but chances are, if somebody's responding, they're prob probably those side effects are gonna be present in that setting of response. Maybe they're more sensitive. So then what do we do next? Well, we can actually decrease the dose intensity. And I can tell you, participating in the phase one study where we studied very low doses of the drug and worked our way up, because as with all phase one studies, you need to find out what's the active drug level. The first 30 to 40 patients had none of these side effects that we just described. And it was only as we were getting to the higher doses, and in fact, it, when we have these early phase studies, you're asked as an investigator, is this side effect related to the drug or not? And when it first happened, we said, maybe not, because we dosed 40 patients and we didn't have any of these side effects. But then as we got to these higher doses, it became clear that there was a relationship. So these side effects are related to the dose. And what we've shown in prior presentations is that when you skip or reduce the dose intensity, skip a dose, reduce the frequency, or reduce the amount of the dose, these side effects actually improve. And the good news is that the efficacy is not compromised. So at this point, I probably treated about 150 patients with talquetamab um, on and off clinical trials. And I can think of only one patient that we weren't able to find the right dose and schedule to keep them on this treatment and benefiting. 
And lastly, I'll say, <clears throat> when I'm consenting patients and talking about these side effects, I don't by any means want to minimize the impact of taste on quality of life. And that is a patient perspective. And as I said, we need to do a better job of understanding the patient perspective. But what I start with is, you know what I didn't tell you as side effects? Death. We don't see deaths with this drug like some of the other products where patients' myeloma may be controlled, but they're dying of infection. So we're not seeing that. In fact, in New York, we were in the epicenter of COVID, and we did not lose patients to COVID with talquetamab. And we've shown that actually, if you're getting talquetamab, you can actually still respond to vaccines. So we don't see deaths. We don't see heart issues. We don't see lung issues. We don't see diarrhea. We don't see neuropathy. We don't see kidney issues. We see these other side effects, but they're manageable by changing the dose and schedule. So I think that's what makes this drug so unique. And these side effects also don't overlap with other drugs. So you're seeing a lot of exciting combinations. You can combine talquetamab with almost all the available products. We're seeing talquetamab plus DARA leading to a progression-free survival of 19 months. Talquetamab plus teclistamab, 20 months. Talquetamab plus pomalidomide, over 90% response rate. So I think this drug is able to be combined with our other drugs because we know in myeloma, single agent therapy is not the way to go. Myeloma is too smart to be throwing one drug at a time. You have to mix and match and throw the myeloma off its game. And this drug can actually allow you to do that. And what I'm really hopeful for is that in the future, as we do more combinations, two drug, three drugs, maybe we can back off on the dose so that you don't even have to have those side effects at the beginning. And then we can get this great, amazing synergy with efficacy without those side effects. But I think it's really exciting to have this option. And it's the only GPRC targeting therapy. We have a lot of BCMA targeting therapies, but this is unique. And I think that's why uh, I, I, I hope that patients and providers um, take advantage of it because um, one other place we've used it a lot is we know that CAR-Ts are really effective, but if you have CAR-T with, if your disease is exploding, CAR-Ts are more risky at that point. And so one, what we sometimes do is we collect people's T-cells and give talquetamab as a bridging because we've already collected the T-cells. We don't want to give bispecifics before collecting the T-cells because that might impair the CAR-T, but collect the T-cells, have it manufactured. In the meantime, don't let the disease go out of control. Use talquetamab for whatever one to three months to knock the myeloma down. And that way, when you do the CAR-T, you can actually get those benefits without the side effects that we worry about, like Parkinson's and secondary cancer. So I think it's a great molecule to have, and I'm glad that we have more options for our patients.